<clears throat> All right, it looks like we're starting to go live here, and uh, I'm going to jump on over to Facebook and make sure that we share this out with all the fine folks who need to hear my lips flap. So give me one second, everybody. Get excited, get excited, get excited. We're going to have some fun today. Woo! Man, oh man, are we going to have some fun. All right. So let's share this to a few places. I can see people are starting to jump in already for the live session of this. And that's exciting. You have to listen to me sing. Yeah. Steve gets to listen to that quite often. Oh, that's great. I don't know. <laughs> what's, with the, what's with the chef's hat? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and find out, won't we? Okay. Don't jump the gun, Steve. I won't. Don't jump the gun, Steve. You'll find out why I'm wearing a chef's hat in a minute. You're going to be sad when you do because you're going to find out it's just because I like it. Okay. Not actually true. I do like it. I might wear it all the time. Yeah, there you go. That'd be good. Why not? Why not? Where'd you get that? At the lobster restaurant or something? Or? Uh, no, I got it at uh, Party City. Mm. Uh, when I go to Party City, by the way, folks, I, I, I love Party City. When I go to Party City, um, I'm probably the guy they talk about later in the day. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Did you see what that guy bought? Why, what, why would he be buying that? That's weird. I've got my reasons. All right. With that, Steve, are we ready to get this show on the road? Quit picking your teeth, dang it. Okay. All right. I just ate lunch. I know, me too. I started eating lunch, then we had to do the show, but <coughs> after we're done, I will finish. I got a Subway sandwich today sitting here waiting mm. for me. Yum. Subway, the official sponsor of not this show mm -hmm. yet. Someday. All right. Here we go. Ready in five and four and three and two on today's episode of Video Marketing Madness, we're going to talk about what microphones you need for your productions, especially here in uh, 2021, because it's not 2020 anymore, folks, despite my proclivities to keep calling it 2020. Yes, that's right. We're going to talk microphones. And speaking of microphones, today's show is made possible by one of our great friends, and that is the people over at Movo. Now, uh, just so everybody understands, they're not a sponsor of this show. We just love their products, and uh, so I've signed up to be an affiliate. And so that's what we do is we uh, promote their products, and hopefully... If you are smart, you go and pick up some of their products. And this weekend, by the way, is Memorial Day weekend. So if you're watching this in the future, it doesn't apply to you. But the link will still apply in general. You can pick up Movo products anytime. But this weekend, they're going to have a lot of great sales going on for Memorial Day. So be sure to check out Movo this weekend. Pick up the microphones that you need or the other items that they have, like stands and lights. And you'll be able to get them at a nice little discount for the items that are on sale. And you can do that by heading on over to raiselinks.com slash Movo, M-O-V-O. So head on over there. And uh, in the meantime, while you're checking that out, we're going to hit our funky music and get it going. He's Ray the Video Guy. Yeah, Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at. Even if he's a little fat, he's filled with video expertise. And has so much knowledge that you need. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy. Yeah, Ray the Video Guy. And it's the radio show about video, video marketing madness with Ray the Video Guy. And I'm Steve Sleeper. Go VMM.com, the landing page. That's where you can find all the podcatchers and get social with us. Of course, we like Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review. Subscribe. All that good stuff. I've got a little secret, though, Steve. What's that? I'm no longer using Apple Podcasts. What? That's right. I actually switched to a third-party uh, podcast catcher, and there's a really strange reason why. What's this that? is very weird. And uh, I looked online, and I guess people had this issue a couple years ago, but uh, I didn't find anything new or recent about it. But a couple years ago, a similar issue. Uh, all of a sudden, the other day, my iPhone started 
you know, my iPhone literally, my I've got the iPhone 11 Pro Max, mm-hmm. and that sucker will last two days. Like literally, at the end of the day, I've still got half my battery. And oh. all of a sudden, about a week ago, by about noon, I was already dead, completely dead. My phone was wiped out of battery. I'm like, what is going on? And oh, I must not have charged it. I must have thought I charged yeah. it overnight and didn't. Yeah. So I charged it up again the next day, dead by about noon or one o'clock again. Instead of going two days, wow. it was going, you know, four hours at most. Yeah. And I also noticed that when I'm listening to podcasts, that phone starts getting super hot. Don't know why. So it's getting hot. The battery's being sucked down. And so I finally, you know, I, I'm seeing the battery just going down so fast. And then I wasn't listening to the podcasts and the phone cooled down and the battery wasn't going away as quick. And I realized something's going on with the uh, podcast app that's causing it to suck down battery like a, a madhouse. So I wow. switched to a third party one and I can't remember the the name of it. I think it's called like podcasts or something like that. I can't remember. Oh. Oh. But uh, yeah, now, now I can listen to podcasts all day and my phone still lasts two days again. So, well, you would think Apple would fix that at some point. I'm sure they will, but I'm not willing to waste battery every day until they do. So, I, guess I we'll hear just you. Have to wait and find out. Plus, I hear you, brother. It's getting to be time to get me a new phone anyway. Uh, when that iPhone 13 comes out. This one will be gone. Yeah. And that's only a couple months away. But yeah, so that's why I switched, at least temporarily. Uh, the good thing about that is I only brought in the podcasts that I really listen to, so I don't have 700 of them in there anymore. Because, uh, wow. you know, I'm one of those, I'm like a, a podcast hoarder. I won't go into Apple Podcasts and get rid of the ones I don't listen to anymore. But when I move over to a new one, I just brought in the ones that I really like and that I really listen to. And I listen to a lot of podcasts. I mean, hours and hours and hours every single day listening to podcasts of right. various stripe. So, uh, yeah. But the moral of the story is get out there and give us a review. Even though you might say, these guys are just talking about podcast apps for a half hour. But. Well, wherever you listen to <sighs> us, fine with us. We, we've we got a number of links on there to the podcatchers. We too, sure so do. There's a whole bunch of them there. I know a lot of people like Stitcher. I had Stitcher for a while. I wasn't mm-hmm. a big fan mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. one. Uh, was really? a little, I didn't like that one as much. This one that I got now, I like it. It's actually very similar to the Apple one. Uh, I'm not sure, other than the fact that it shows ads, uh, I'm not sure what the difference is other than that. So it's the same thing, but just with ads. But uh, no, it's it's nice and it works well. Works nice. Yeah. Okay, so. cool. cool. Anyway, so all right, time for me to answer the question. For those of you that are listening, especially those in the future, you're going to be very confused by this, but those of you watching on the old telly, uh, I'm wearing a giant chef's hat, and mm-hmm. uh, the reason why is I just got back from Party City, and I was testing out the hat because we've got something in town this weekend called the Wing Fling, and I don't think I've mentioned oh. that on here before, but the Wing no. Fling is coming up, and... Uh, so what that is is uh, thousands of people descend upon our tiny little town and they try out all sorts of wings from different restaurants and home cooks who compete to be the wing king or queen. And, uh, you know, it's a fun little weekend. I've never been before, but this year, uh, because I am uh, part of the Rotary Club and that's who puts this on every year, uh, I'm actually uh, one of the guys in charge of setting it all up and making sure it all runs and getting signs put out on the streets and everything else in between. Plus... I'm going to be having my own wing station at the Wing Fling. Wow. Mm. Now, wing the good fling. news is, for everybody that shows up, I will not be the one cooking the wings. Okay. Uh, I've actually partnered with a great restaurant that uh, is brand new here in town called Mimi's Comfort Food. And I just dropped off uh, 500 wings to her just a little while ago. And she's going to be getting them ready and uh, we'll be setting up for Saturday. So on Saturday, we will be in the Wing Fling cook-off. And we'll also have an uh, Impossible Escape booth there, so we'll be able to uh, do a little, uh, we've got this nice little portable escape room challenge puzzle box that we'll have there, and we'll also have uh, some free giveaways, some t-shirts to give away, and some tickets to give away, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we're going to have a jolly good time at the Wing Fling, and that's why I'm wearing this chef's hat, because officially, even though I really won't be cooking anything, I will be a chef at the Wing Fling. You'll be winging it. I'll be winging it, baby. Winging oh, that's it. That's cool. Yeah, that's in fact, cool. I want to see. I should go see if I can get like a sticker made at like Office Depot or Office Max and it says Impossible Escape and stick it on there or something. That'd be kind mm. of fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That would be fun, fun, fun. 
So Yeah. Anyway, so that's why I'm wearing this cool little hat, but that's not why you're here. You're here to hear why you can hear what I say. And the reason you can hear what I say when uh, you're here is because we've got these wonderful things called microphones. And uh, if you produce any kind of video, you already know there are a ton of different types of microphones out there. And you may be confused as to what you need to use, when you need to use it, how you need to use it, uh, or if you need one at all. Right? Yeah. And that's the big question. So most of the people that I talk to on a daily basis are business owners and uh, you know marketing professionals that do videos. And most of them do videos with their smartphones. Uh, they're just grabbing their smartphone, making a quick video, putting it out there in the world. And uh, whether you're doing that with your smartphone or you're doing it with a nice camcorder or a DSLR, there are different types of microphones that you're going to want to use. And there's going to be different ways that you will have to use them. And some microphones may not work with your setup or may need some sort of adapters to work with your setup. And so that's what I kind of want to talk about today. Uh, in general, in general, whether you're using a smartphone, a DSLR, a camcorder, the uses of the microphone or the types of microphones that you would use will be the same. It's a matter of whether that particular brand works with what you have or if you need an adapter. But the the uses, the, the use cases will be the same no matter what you're shooting with. And so I want to talk about a couple of different ways that you might be shooting videos. So one might be the old interview style, a stand-up. And if you're using your camcorder, your DSLR, or your iPhone, traditionally you're going to have somebody standing against a background or maybe they're sitting in a chair and you're going to be sitting across from them or standing across from them and shooting them as they talk about their business or whatever it is that um, they're trying to, to do in that particular video. Or maybe it's a testimonial video, something like that. One of the best things you can use in that particular situation because it's what we call a controlled environment. And what I mean by a controlled environment in this case is you've got the camera here, they're here, they know they're supposed to be there, they're talking to the camera, it's all under control. You're not just running around like, uh, for instance, a, a shooting a basketball game or a hockey game or a football game would be an uncontrolled environment because you don't know where the ball's gonna go, you don't know who's gonna do what that you need to capture on, on the uh, video. So in these controlled environments, a nice lavalier microphone is perfect for this because it's going to be put on their lapel or their shirt it's going to be fairly close to their mouth and they're going to be able to get an, you know, the microphone's going to be able to get a really nice sound, very clean. And even if you don't have a very expensive microphone or expensive lavalier microphone, it will do a world of good compared to, let's say, using your camera, which might be three, four, five, seven feet away, which is not going to pick up very good sound by itself. So having a nice lavalier microphone or even a cheap lavalier microphone will do very well in that particular situation. Uh, the downsides to the lavalier, obviously, if it's a corded lavalier and you need to move around a lot, that's not going to work very well. Um, if you have multiple people you have to deal with, you're constantly going to have to take it off one person, put it on the next person, etc. So those can be some of the downsides. But uh, if you're doing, you know, one interview and you're just talking to somebody for 10 minutes, they take it off, put it on the next person, you do another interview for 10 minutes, that's not going to be a major issue. Um, as I said, wired lavaliers, very nice, very clean sound. Um, personally, for me, in most situations, I like to use the wired lavalier microphones simply because you don't have to worry about um, interference, you know, cutouts. And, and quite honestly, if you're really good at listening to audio, even a high-end wireless microphone, some people can tell, tell a difference between a wired and a wireless, even a nice wireless, because you do lose something in the transfer over the air versus, you know, directly on a wire. So for me, I like to use a wired one when I can, but uh, we also use a lot of wireless ones as well. In fact, I got a a shelf full of Movo wireless microphones up there, uh, little lavalier microphones that are uh, uh, UHF, and I've got some one that is um, a uh, uh, what used to be the old wireless telephone band. You know, the was it the four four gigs or whatever it was, um, four gigahertz, and that one actually works really really well. is very inexpensive, and because it goes over that particular band. 
you know, not many things are using it now, so you don't have to worry about the interference, but it's also a lot less expensive than uh, a UHF microphone would be, and the clarity is fantastic. And it's like 100 bucks for the darn thing, which um, back in the day, years and years ago, when we did like wedding videography, and we were spending 500 to to $1,000 on a, a wi one wireless microphone set, and here you can get that one for 100 bucks, and, uh, you know, since nobody really uses those wireless phones anymore... You know, I'm talking about the ones from your house, those Panasonic ones. Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, interference or anything like that with it. And uh, so it works very, very good. And, of course, you can go up to the bigger ones. I got the UHF one. I think the Movo UHF one is only like $180, which still is a lot cheaper than we used to pay for a really good microphone. Uh, and, again, you know, if you want to check out any of these, uh, raiselinks.com slash Movo, you can see those microphones. There are microphones made by tons of different companies from Shure to Sennheiser, um, Audio-Technica. So there's a lot of different brands out there. Uh, what we, Steve's pointing at his. What, what brand is your microphone there, Steve? It's an Audio-Technica. I yeah. forget the serial number, but it's basically the $100 Audio-Technica. Sure. It's got XLR and USB on the back yeah. end. And, and a lot of, by the way, a lot of the microphones that you get, like the Lavalier microphones, um, you can buy an Audio Technica Lavalier microphone or an Asden or something like that. But a lot of these companies that sell you these wireless microphones and stuff, they're they're using Audio Technica microphones mm -hmm. on their systems. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, they build the the wireless systems, but you actually get like an Audio Technica microphone in there. Or sometimes you can choose the the brand of microphone that goes with it. Um, but any of those systems will work really really well. Uh, we used to use a lot of Samson. Uh, Samson, not a, not a name that everybody knows. However, they do make uh, the Samson. Uh, I think it's called the Mikey, and it's a it's a little desktop USB microphone. So they've kind of become more well known because that product sells in places like Best Buy and, and whatnot. Um, so Samson, another really good company. We used to get a lot of their wireless microphones in the day. But the point being is, if you're going to be Doing something where somebody's on camera, they're nice and close, you want a good sound, then a nice lavalier microphone is going to be exactly what you need. Uh, I used to use a Radio Shack one years ago, and oh, yeah. it was cheap, yeah. but it worked well. You know, it, yeah. it, it did. It was, a, it was a monster because it was, a, you know, it was the little wireless pack, but on the other end, it was the giant box. Oh, and you had wow. to plug the box into the wall and then plug that into your camera. It wasn't, uh, you know, the two little boxes that you uh, are both, uh, you know, run on batteries so um that was still better than just having you know your your microphone on your camera um at a distance now speaking of at a distance and microphones one other type of microphone that can work really well when you're out on the street as they say because um i used to do uh this one company that i used to work with they used to send me out on all sorts of video assignments most of the time it would be to go to a business and interview a business owner, but there was a couple of times, uh, and, and it was actually through AOL, um, they would do like these man on the street things where I would literally be the guy in the street asking people questions. Oh. And they'd pay me to do this. It was kind of cool. So I'd say like, hey, uh, like I remember one was on um, the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Um, of and I was out there asking people, you know, hey, what, where were you on 9-11 and, and asking their opinions on it and things like that. And in those types of situations, having a lavalier microphone is probably not going to be, sound-wise it might be ideal, but um, because you're going to constantly be talking to different people and plugging it in and, and um, you know, one person's answering the question and their buddy's standing next to them and they say something and you can't hear what they're saying. So it can be a pain in the neck when it comes to that. So... Um, one of the things that we like to use are, are shotgun microphones. Now, I will tell you this, back in on that 911 one, I actually had a big shotgun microphone. It was probably about a foot long. Um, it was on a big boom pole and everything else. And it was a pain in the neck to use out on the streets. It was great in the studio. But nowadays, we have some really good options for these little tiny shotgun condenser microphones. And um, there's a few companies that make these. Um, I believe uh, Rode... Had, Rhodes is called the uh, video mic, I think, or something like that. I, I can't remember what, what it's called, but Rode, R-O-D-E. Um, they make it. It's just about, probably about four, in, four or five inches long. It looks like a little microphone, and it mounts with a shock mount right to the top of your uh, tripod or, or whatever it is that you're using. And it allows you to focus on one person from a slight distance. So now when that, micro, when that camera is three, four, five feet away, you can actually pick up a really good sound 
as opposed to the built-in microphone. Um, the one that uh, the one that we use is no surprise here, made by Movo. It's actually, uh, in fact, uh, we're currently doing a giveaway of this particular Movo microphone, and we'll talk about that at the end. But uh, the microphone that we use there is the VXR10. It l work, looks just like the Rode. Um, it's a, the um, they've got the regular and they got the pro version now. The pro version is even bigger. Um, you know, and, and by bigger, you wouldn't even know it was bigger until you see it next to the old one, and you're like, well, that's actually bigger. Um, but both of these, sorry, Rode, both of these are less expensive than the Rode microphone, and in comparison tests have, have proven to be better than the Rode mic. So all of you that love Rode, I saw, sorry for saying that, but uh, there's plenty of YouTube videos showing that out there for much less of a price, you can actually get a, a better sound. And I think, uh, I think right now you can get that microphone for... Um, between, I, th I think the uh, the smaller one is like 30 and the bigger one's like 40 or 50 right now at Movo, so you can get one of those. Or you can check out the Rode one. The Rode is, uh, you know, the Rode's still a very good microphone. But those little mini shotgun mics are great because they still make it ultra portable. You don't have to deal with wires. You don't have to deal with putting a microphone on anybody. You can literally be shooting somebody here, spin around in the next direction, and that microphone will be pointing at them. And uh, in my case, when I do it with my smartphone, I actually use uh, another Movo product, which is the uh, PR1. It's a uh, it, it holds your phone and sticks it onto the tripod. It's also got a hand grip, so you can hold it. And then on the top of that, it's got a shoe, so I can stick that VXR10 on top of that. Uh, and that's what we're giving away, by the way, in, in this contest. We'll talk about in a minute. In that contest, um, you get the hand grip that is the tripod mount, and you get the um, uh, shotgun microphone at the same time. So. Very cool little combination, but that will help you when you're out on the road trying to get some video done and you want to get a good sound. Mm -hmm. So what about when you're not out on the road and you've got uh, a little bit more of a, a situation where you're in a studio? Well, in a studio, uh, your lavalier microphone will probably work fine. In fact, um, the VXR10, the little shotgun mic, if you put that on a little mount in front of you and stuck it right in front of your face there, you could actually get a very good uh, sound doing that as well. I've actually tried that out. Uh, it's, certainly, it's you know that's not what it's meant for, but it can actually work just like my microphone here that I'm that I'm using, um, just smaller and and you know gives a nice little sound. Um, but in the situation where you're doing things like voiceovers, you're sitting at a desk like we are, we're doing a podcast, you want to have some sort of a broadcasting microphone, and here there are a ton of options. Now, Steve already mentioned that he's got an Audio-Technica microphone that he uses, and uh, me, on my side, you can't really see it here. For those of you that are watching, I'll switch over here so you can kind of get a, a view of it. This is a, uh, an Electro Voice RE20, and uh, that microphone is actually... Um, it's actually a very expensive microphone. It's it's one that you would actually, if you ever watch a, a TV show about you know somebody in a radio studio or a movie about radio or high end podcasting or you know something like that, this is t traditionally the microphone that you'll see is the Audio Technica, uh, Audio Technica, the uh, Electro Voice RE20 or a variant of that. They do have a, a few different models. Uh, typically, it's this kind of tannish gray color, and and you'll you you kind of recognize it kind of looks pretty unique there's a black version of it as well that's used at a different model and i can't recall the model name for that but it's a very nice microphone um it re it's required to be plugged into some sort of phantom power so you need to plug it into a mixer of some of some kind or uh, something that will allow it to have power so that you can get a sound out of it otherwise you're going to get a very quiet sound so if you want to get a robust sound out of it, you need to plug it into some sort of a mixer that will give it power, and then that would go into your computer or other audio devices. And uh, that also allows you to control that voice, even though I'll be completely honest, I'm terrible with that kind of stuff. I don't really understand a lot of the um, audio controls, so I always have to get somebody who really understands audio to come in and mix it up a little bit, and it probably needs to be done by a professional right now to make me sound even better than I already do. And uh, Steve, you got the same thing. Yours is, is, are you using XLR or are you going directly into the computer? XLR. I've got a, uh, I got a Behringer mixer. Just a, nice. a, 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 it's a, it's a two input Behringer mixer, so it's uh, yeah. pretty basic. Yep. But it's got a mic input and a line input, and it's got a little EQ on it. So I roll off a little the top end and add a little the bottom end. Nice. It, it works fine. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the way that the way that I have it, I've got it running into a Yamaha mixer. Um, Yamaha makes a, a really nice little mixer, not expensive, and the mix. The reason I got that mixer is that mixer 
you plug in there. It's got like seven inputs on this one, I think, six or seven. And it has a USB output to go directly to the computer. So it's got that USB oh, cool. interface, yeah, that was, so, and, which that. is rare. You know, a lot, of, a lot of mixers, I suppose more and more of them do now, but uh, back in the day, a lot of mixers didn't have that, so that was kind of a novel feature because otherwise you need to get some sort of interface to go back into the computer, but this one had it built in. Well, and, and I used to use a little Shure device. It was uh, about the size of a hockey puck. And uh, you plug the microphone into that, and then that would go out to the computer, and it would give it phantom power. It didn't have any options, really, but it was a nice little, uh, nice little kit. Well, with mine, with mine, it's got, uh, I got an uh, adapter from, from B&H that is two phono quarter-inch phono plugs out to a pin plug that I can plug into the microphone uh, connector thing on the back of the computer, the little pin plug. Uh, nice. One of those eight, one-eighth inch pin plug things. And that works really well. Um, and at uh, at my church, we stream our services live, so I've got a, a couple of AVG wireless mics. I've got a podium mic that, you know, looks like a podium mic. Sure. Can't yep. remember the name of it. And then I got a shotgun mic that I hang from the ceiling. And uh, I've got another Behringer with uh, four mic inputs and then a line input for the organ, which just happens to be electronic. And um, I've, uh, I use RCA outs to a uh, USB <laughs> connector <Nice. laughs> uh, into, the, into the computer. And it sounds good. It sounds fine. You know? yeah. So I kind of I cobbled that together. And uh, for the longest time, I was just using a Yeti, and the pastor was just doing everything from the altar. But uh, we decided to kind of grow up and, you know, actually. Well, let and, him and do that's actually and altar and everything. yeah, and that's that's the next place we're going with that because what we're talking about here sounds a little complex. And and to be honest with you, if I had things going properly, and if I can get an audio engineer, not only do I have the mixer, I've got a separate compressor and a separate. Uh, oh, power. Yeah. I mean, I've got a couple of different units in here that I just don't know how to use well enough. But if we use them properly, we can really gate the sound and and you know do lots of cool things. I, make I've them never sound been really good. I've but. never been good at that. Um, I, 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 and and um, I've always found that the the compressor that uh, comes with the editor, you know, the the software is good enough. I, sure. I've never been a big believer in doing a lot of EQ or a lot of compression or anything like that. So like with this, when we're done with the, uh, the show, I uh, download uh, the video, just upload that straight to YouTube, and then I... Uh, Oh, what do I use? It's it's uh, it is called VLC Media Player, oh, yeah. and that's yep. like the yeah you know, that's like the Swiss Army knife of media players. Sure is. And so I I can import the video in there and then just download a, an MP3 audio. Uh, I take that, edit out the front part where we're just kind of messing around. Then I upload it into uh, Audacity, which is a free um, a free software, a free uh, shareware. And I just use the compressor on that, and to me, that's good enough. That sounds fine. Now, I, I'm not saying I'm right uh, or wrong or whatever, because I, I, I know a lot of podcasting guys that have this bank of compressors and everything and, you know, have it set up correctly. But I, I've just found less is more. Eh, that's, just, that's just me, you know. Sure. No, that's 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 you know, there's a thousand ways to, to do these things, and, and I certainly don't claim to be the professional on that part of it, um, which is why I, I need to friend an audio engineer in the area. Well, that, uh, and you, know. you bring up a good point, too, because I think if you're going to add a lot of out, uh, outboard gear for compressors and equalization and what have you, get somebody in there that knows what they're doing to, yeah. uh, you know, to not so much you know plug everything in but but to to make all the adjustments because otherwise if it's done wrong it it just sounds terrible it might sound good to you when you set it up and then you record something and put it out there and it sounds like dog doo-doo you know so. <laughs> yeah and and you know i don't know if any of you have ever dealt with this but not dealt with it, but run across somebody that you've heard on uh, the radio or voiceover or something like that and you know, in the voiceover, they sound like this. And then you meet them in person, and they actually sound they like sound this. Like this. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, and, and that's because they, the audio engineer knows how to tweak that stuff up and really give a good mm -hmm. sound oh, to everybody. Sure. And that's, oh, that's what well, I would yeah. love to have as a professional to, uh, well, you know, to do and that for me. So I can get a good the, sound. 
back in the day, I uh, managed a small recording studio a long time ago, 40 years ago when I was in uh, college. And we had an 8-track recorder, and we had some really expensive mics, like Neumann U87s, which are very expensive microphones. Um, And uh, again, I was a less is more type of guy. Uh, The only thing I plugged into a compressor might be the drums or something, but I tried to use as little outboard gear as as possible, focus on the equalization and... uh, um, you know, and we did a live, a lot of live to two track recording for bands and, uh, it, it sounded good, but, but again, I'm talking to me, I'm not talking to anybody else. You know, a lot of people like to do a, a lot of compression on stuff. I mean, listen to the old Beatles stuff that was recorded on four track gear. If you look at the equipment that was recorded on it, looks like they got it from a caveman or something. And, uh, <laughs> but they, they, they utilized really, uh, analog uh, processing that would still be the same now if you're using analog processing and listen to some of that and it's absolutely fantastic and that was that was george martin knowing how to eq and and, and use compression and you know everything else so yep and now to take this to another level because right now people are probably going holy cow i can't do all this well you don't have to most of the time in fact there's a lot easier way so we're talking about these desktop type of microphones so this is a more complex setup but one thing that was thrown out there, Steve mentioned the, the Yeti, and earlier I mentioned the, uh, the Samson microphone. There's a lot of desktop microphones that will plug in USB that sound fantastic and will do oh, sure. very, very well. Uh, our guys at Movo, they've got the, uh, the UMC 700, which I've reviewed. Uh, it looks a lot like the Yeti, works like the Yeti, fantastic microphone. All of those types of microphones will give you an amazing sound without having to go out and buy mixers and EQs and, you know, compressors and and XLR converters and all this other stuff. You're going to be able to just plug it directly right into your computer and you're good to go and you're going to get a great sound. Um, Blue microphones that makes the Yeti, they make the Snowball, which is another really good one. My daughter uses that. It literally looks like a big silver ball and it's on a little, little tripod stand. Um, I've got the Yeti, I've got the UMC 700 here, and we use all of these things. The UMC 700 is the one that I'll use when I'm on the road or if I'm at home and I want to do a voiceover of some kind and, and I don't have you know, my, my desktop set up. Um, it's a great microphone for that, so any of those will work really well. That Samson mic is great, and there's a bunch of other ones. You can go to Best Buy, you can get the Snowball, you can get the Yeti, you can get the Samson microphone, and there's a bunch of others too that you know I, I don't know off the top of my head, but... You know, you go into Best Buy, they'll even have a row of them. There's like six or seven of them that they sell that are really, really good that will plug in like that. Well, and and, and depending on what we're doing, uh, I I may not use this Audio-Technica mic. This is the best mic I've got as far as sound goes. And the other thing that I like about it is it's very... um, very directional extremely directional you'll notice if you're watching the video i'm right up on it otherwise it doesn't pick stuff up Uh, and and that's good because i work out of my home and we got dogs and they make noise and yada 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 but i also uh starting next week i'm going to do a a a daily bible study on youtube where i'm reading the bible and then interpreting it i've got basically a degree in bible study Studies. That should be and, interesting. Uh, yeah, and what I'm going to do, I, I want to see how it goes, but this ain't going to work doing a Bible study, so I'm using my Yeti, so I can just set it in front of me and talk, put it on cardioid, and uh, that's a situation where I, I don't want to be right up on a microphone. I don't want to have a mic in my face, you know, and that Yeti is perfect for that. So depending on the circumstances uh, depends on the on the mic that you use. Um the only thing I've noticed is that uh, I do have a USB cord running from the back of it to plug into the Eddy, but when I'm not using it, I've got to unplug it. Otherwise, they, these two mics don't interface too well. So, but uh, gotcha. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know the other thing uh, we bring up the Yeti, the UMC 700, and probably some of those other microphones as well. Make sure you learn how to use them. Um, because I see all the time, especially with the Yeti, because it is a popular microphone, where people use it incorrectly. You know, um, this microphone that we got here, the one that Steve's using, you'll notice the one that Steve's using there, uh, he's not pointing it at himself. Mm-hmm. 
you know yeah. the one that i have i am it actually points directly at me it's it's a directional mic now with the the uh, blue yeti this is side this is side address by the way exactly you talk into it yeah here you don't talk, talk to the top side. even though people think oh i gotta point the top towards myself and you know talk into it so just learn learn your microphones as you get into them because um, a lot of people do that incorrectly and they wonder why it sounds weird well it sounds weird because you're supposed to be talking into the front of the mic and people are talking to the top of it and uh, the yeti does have a um an omnidirectional setting on there so you can talk into the top of it on that one but it's it, you know it's not really the way well, it's built the, the, the yeti is really and i know mobile's got one just like it but they, they are good all-purpose yep, mics. absolutely they really are and the the, uh, the one cool feature with both the uh, yeti and the umc 700 is they have that uh, dual mic feature and if you set it to dual mic then what it has is it's got you put the microphone in between two people you know so if you're i'm sitting on one side of the table and they're sitting on the other uh, you put the microphone in between the two of you and right. it picks up from both sides as an individual track and and you know you can pick it up um that way and, and so you'll both sound really good you don't have to be next to each other talking into well, the mic you can be across from each other we uh, uh, i i do a, a, another podcast besides this one on uh, omaha history podcast and uh you know, I'd like to say it was once a year. We didn't do it last year, obviously. But uh, the guy that does it is uh, he writes a, a blog uh, on, on Omaha history, and I, and and this guy's serious. I mean, he's does all his research, and you know, he's got like five hundred blog entries or a thousand. It's ridiculous. Um, and and he's a very good historian. And uh, so once a year, we get a classroom. And we invite people to come in the classroom, and then I bring my laptop and my Yeti and put it on stereo. He sits on one side, and I sit on the other, and we record a podcast in front of people. We're in a small environment, so they can hear us without amplification. Sure. At the end of the and and, and nobody's uh, you know I mean you might hear somebody clear their throat or something, but you know we announce that we're in front of a live audience. It sounds great, Ray. Oh and yeah, if I'm sure I, it does. It, it, and and the thing is, with it being stereo, left and right, I'm able to take that and mix it down so that it's not in the left and right speaker it's in both speakers but i have i have a two-track recording and i have control over each of us uh, that that is a great application for that and and if you want to have fun and make it ping pong you can do that too i mean it can be you know left and right so yeah no yeah. That, it, it's it's good for that kind of stuff and, and i love using uh that on occasion um especially because we've got you know we've got uh um, a, a camera feature with the iPhone where you can do the same thing, where you can shoot both cameras front and back oh, yeah. at the same time and get a yeah. dual shot going. So, um, yeah, it's it's pretty nifty, pretty nifty yeah. stuff, yeah. I do have yeah. to say. Um, but, yeah, you know, it just takes a little bit of effort and a little bit of uh, know-how, and you can really sound great. And there's still other options out there. You know, like I said, I've got big shotgun microphones that we use in the – well, we used to use in the studios when I had a studio, <laughs> which I don't really have one now just because the uh, the escape room takes up all the space in this particular location. So I'm, I'm relegated to a very – I'm relegated to a, a glorified broom closet at this point. But uh, when I had a studio, it was really cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you gave that up to get in the escape room business, so you know. I did. You know, our overall office is three times the size, but uh, my my little corner of the world is uh, unfortunately closet. a lot smaller. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a closet. So you got a couple questions. You know, we might. Uh, oh, well, uh, whoa, we got questions. Say what? And 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 they're a little off topic. So do you want me to ask them Heck for yeah. you? Yeah. If people want right, if okay. people are going to ask us questions. We'll uh, we'll tell them the wrong answers. Why not? Uh, I've got it right in front of me. If you want me to read it to you, one Go comes from it. from John Young. He's saying, "Ray, I'm getting links for your webinar, like the one for Mike's. I think you recently held, but my email link never connects. A little icon just spins and spins. Any other complaints? Sorry to bring it up here, but hmm. didn't. no, that's that's fine, John. Because I, I mean, obviously, a lot of people uh, get that. I I have not experienced that because um, I join those webinars too and i haven't had anybody else talk about that um unfortunately i don't know the answer to that it it could be your uh email provider uh you know whoever's hosting your email john and and i'm starting to kind of get into uh you know i'm starting to tell you more than i really know at this point but <laughs> hey, you might that. 
you might want to check with with them. You might want to check with your security settings on 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 the email and see if yeah. there's any. I'd, you know. I'd also be curious because I know a lot of the ones we've been doing lately, people have been using GoToWebinar. So I'd be curious to know, like when we do our webinars, because we don't use GoToWebinar, if that still um, tends yeah. to be an issue or not, you know, outside of GoToWebinar. So. And then Gregory wants to know, you are also a singer. <laughs> oh yes, I am definitely a singer. Uh, probably a, a mixture. A cross between uh, Weird Al and uh, and Joey Ramone would be yeah, my yeah, uh, my yeah. my singing abilities. I'm I am not allowed to sing at my church. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's my, a joke, you know what my my father in law um, somebody did actually ask him not to sing at church. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? No, I'd never been asked. We just I think it was half boy. a joke, but they they, yeah. they did. No, what, what, we, the running joke at my church is oh. I'm not allowed to hey, sing because people I'm, are calling my phone while we're online. I'll be darned. Okay, here. Okay, John answered. Ray, I'm getting links. No, wait a minute. Oh, John says it's a mystery, but thanks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Life is a mystery. Yes. See, Steve, I don't know if you caught what happened there. What? But uh, uh, my phone started ringing. I'm. I've I've recently switched to my phone as the webinar web camera because Which it actually is looks much wonderful. Better. It looks but great. It, yeah. it does. It looks. In fact, I went back to the C920 yesterday. I couldn't believe how terrible that thing looks um, in comparison. But uh, I forgot to block my phone so that phone calls didn't come through. And we just got we got one earlier. Uh, our good buddy Adam called, and it didn't do anything. It just sh it showed up on my computer screen, so I just hit decline. And this time, my son called, and it actually rang. I could hear it and everything. What so did did, did weird. the phone? I, I was like looking at Facebook. Did the phone? Uh, sh did the camera shake? At no, all, no, or? it didn't shake no. anything. Thankfully, I don't no, think. No, but that's, uh, good. that's, that's good. just kind of funny. So, well, if you're I tell you use what, though, your phone as a camera. Make sure you put it in silent mode. That's right. But I tell you what, if you're watching uh, the, uh, the the video of this, which we start as a Facebook Live, we upload it to YouTube, then we put it out to all the pod, podcatchers. But if yes. you're watching the video of this, look look at Ray on the left, look at me on the right. I've got a high-end Logitech C920. Ray's using his smartphone with some software interface. Ray, Ray's looks Indeed. better. Indeed. It so does. and the other thing too is I, I upgraded the the lights in here on the background. You may notice it's a lot more yeah. orangey yeah. red this week because I've got these big gigantic lights up here uh, that I bought for a different purpose, but they weren't getting used anymore. And I'm like, I'm bringing them into the studio. So yeah, I've got a daylight for balance for for fluorescent light in a, and uh, in a um, trouble light hanging there, and that's that's me. <laughs> that's I'm a everything cheapo. involved. We got to have lights. We got to have everything. But going back to the microphones for a second, the bottom line with all of this is there are a lot of different microphones out there. Almost anything is going to be better than your on-camera microphone. So whether it's a cheap lavalier, which by the way, Movo makes those. Uh, Audio Audio Technica makes them. Asden makes them. Um, the uh, the Movo microphone, by the way, again, you know, shilling. Movo products here. Um, you can check all their stuff out at raiselinks.com slash Movo. And um, their lavalier microphone, it's like 18 bucks. And it will plug directly into your smartphone. It has, a, you know, it has the ability to go into a smartphone or into a regular camera. So you, you've got that versatility. Um, a lot of the other ones, if you get them, they will not plug into your smartphone as, as a microphone. You'll have to get some sort of an adapter first in order to do that. But the Movo one mm -hmm. actually comes with the ability to do either or. So that's good. It's very nice. And there was yeah. another company. Um, and in fact, they're right back here. Uh, Power Dewise. They sent me a couple of microphones. We gave a couple away back a while ago. Uh, Power Dewise. They make a, a similar type of microphone. Theirs actually is very nice. Lavalier microphone. Um, it comes with a cord and then an extender. So uh, the Movo microphone comes with a massive amount of cord. Like it's just, oh. I was like, man, that's awesome how much cord is there. But it's also a lot of cord, I mean, too much cord in, in a lot of situations. So Power Dewise actually did something kind of interesting. They have one cord and then you plug that into the second half of the cord. So if you don't need a long cord, you don't, you know, you're not carrying around a ton of cord. Um, and then that one will also plug into your smartphone or plug into your um computer your dslr your camcorder etc so but the bottom line is any microphone you can get and attach to the system is probably going to be better than what's built in even when we had really nice 
big cameras with those big microphones on the top, you know, a lavalier microphone when you're five feet away is still going to sound better. You know, you could be using a $20,000 camera with a with that built-in microphone on the top of there, and your $20 lavalier is still going to sound better. The uh, the GoPro with the media kit, the media t- the kind of yep. I forget what that media something or other that snaps on like a box. That's a pretty good mic for 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 ambient. It, it, it's really good. The only it, I've, n- I've never used it. I I plugged the lavaliers into that one too. Do you? Got the, yeah, we I've got the little adapter for that. Yeah, and and well, and and I can see why you do because it picks up everything from you know i mean two miles away it's picking yeah. up people you know walking <laughs> i mean it just it's it's so omnidirectional so but it is it is a good ambient mic it sounds good and there's a lot of travel logs that i watch with you know people have it on a little selfie stick and they're just walking yep. either showing something or showing their face just talking with the ambient mic and it sounds good uh just realize that if you're in an in studio situation and you have any traffic outside and you're using your your gopro you probably want to use a lavalier because otherwise yeah. it's gonna and, and i can tell you you know with this mic here um when it's in the right hands as far as this micro for the re20 microphone that we're using for recording this and and plugged into the all the equipment and everything when done right you can literally snap your fingers right next to that microphone and it's not going to pick up i mean it's amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. um my, that's, my that's, buddy no, TJ, that's see that's what that's 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 what outboard gear will do that's what processing yeah. gear is for somebody know, that knows how to set it up that's a beautiful thing yeah he's got he, he's got um you know his re20 on an arm like this and everything and he's got that thing tuned up so much you can clap your hands over here next to it you're not going to hear that and when he moves his around and i don't know if you can hear that at all but Mine's not too loud, but a little bit of creaking and stuff. His was pretty creaky, you know, like, but you couldn't hear that, any of it, on the microphone at all. Wow. Not even a a peep. Um, So when you get the stuff in the right hands, it can be really good. But you don't need to go that crazy, at least not at the beginning. The big thing is here, you want to get started. Get a Yeti. Get a a, a UMC 700. Get a, yeah, well, yeah, uh, there you go. That's always a a good one. Little zoom recorder. They don't look like this anymore. This one's about five years old, but it's just a little zoom recorder yep. with with a left mic and a right mic. Amazing and I, sound. I just I just press this, and this is what I use as my field recorder when I got to record, you know, somebody's voice. Um, it sounds great. It sounds oh, yeah. like an expensive mic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it it, it is an ex- well. It, it, I mean, it's not expensive, but it, it is an expensive mic. It's a high quality, high end microphone. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people. They use the zooms to record. They'll still record audio with their camera, mm-hmm. and they'll use that as a separate one, and then they just sync it together, quiet the sync one on the together. camera, and it's just amazing. And you always have a backup. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I was doing if I was doing uh, weddings like back in the old day, that's probably what I would do now is get a field recorder like that and record the audio that way and sync it up later. You know, you mentioned field recorders. I remember when they were you know huge mm-hmm. and you know and and it had reel to reel tape, but now it's yep. Now uh, it's you know, like a big thumb drive almost. You yep. know, so no, it's amazing stuff. It's amazing where it's got, come and how far it's come in just a few years. But the amount of microphones that are out there, the amount of camera options that are out there, the fact that you know. We live in a time where we carry in our pockets a camcorder <laughs> and, a, and a, a playback machine and a phone and a radio and, and everything you can think of. And the camera on these little smartphones, I mean, they're better and higher quality than professional cameras were, expensive professional cameras 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You know, I used to, I used to shoot uh, weddings with this gigantic Sony that was like $10,000, and it wasn't even HD. Yeah, yeah, you know, right. I mean, it would look like garbage compared to to your smartphone these days. Right, so, right. Yeah, there you good go. Point. Well, well, the and big thing know, is what, audio is important. Got to take care of that. Well, it, audio is important. Try to stay away from the ambient if you can, um, and uh, uh, you know, uh, audio is especially important for video because people will judge the quality of your video based on the audio, uh, with 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 the understanding everything's digital now as far as video goes and. One of the things I, you know, you, you try to not get too salesy on these things, but well, I've looked at a lot of the Movo stuff, and uh, which is supporting us today. But I, I've looked, they, they've got everything you need, and they can kind of guide you through whatever you're doing. You know, uh, yep, they I, do. I, and, I, you know, they, they're, go ahead. they were kind of the um, 
a couple years ago, they were kind of like just the the off brand uh-huh. stuff, and they have yeah. grown into you know a, a name now, um, and they sell everything. I mean, they've got you know they've got um, entire mixers now, like high end mixers that they make and sell. So they've got a lot of really good product. Um, their product always was good, but it was always kind of like the you know it was kind of like a the no name brand. So mm-hmm. Rode would come out yeah. with this mic, they'd come out with something similar that was cheaper. Um, mm-hmm. But their quality was better. Their sound was better mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. In, in a lot of cases, or at least as good, but in a lot of cases better. And now they've kind of become a name brand uh, and are just growing all the time. We've got the, uh, the new web mic that they're coming out with. That's coming out. Uh, yeah. You know, We supported that as a Kickstarter coming out in August, and that sucker is amazing. That's um, a 4K webcam with a high-end mic- condenser microphone built into it and a ring light built into it. So once, uh, you know, once we, we get that thing in here, um, we'll take a look at the, the quality of that, but it'll probably replace the iPhone uh, because I hate using the iPhone as the webcam because it's my phone. And that means every time I want to shoot, it's a pain in the neck to set it all up and you know, whatnot. Uh, it would be nice to have a similar quality without having to use the iPhone all the time for that. So. And, and, and getting back to Movo, I'm looking at their website. For instance, if you go to audio, it says lavalier mics, smartphone audio, on-camera mics, wireless, yep. Tascam, GoPro audio. You know, so they, they give you something for everything. You know, and and, and as you heard, they, they, do sell, they do sell other people's products there a little bit as well. So some of the, like you saw the Tascam things, um, Live Oak Lighting, they sell some of their stuff. So they, they, they sell more than just their own audio equipment. They do sell other um, equipment here and there depending upon what it is but for me the big things are the tripod mount is amazing I mean just an incredible the, the it's got the built-in grip it's got it's got the bubble level on it it's got the shoe on it I mean it, it's very very good uh, compared to other tripod mounts that we've used for smartphones so um, yeah you know it's it's a it's a great company and, and right now by the way Memorial oh, Day weekend minute. <laughs> one more question. One more question. All right, let let's go move. for it. J- John's got another question. If you're using an iPhone, can you use what? And I think he was. Uh, I think he didn't catch what he said. Uh, I, and and John, I, I think I know what you're asking here. Ray talked about uh, Movo has a lavalier mic uh, that has that comes with the adapter for for your iPhone. Uh, if, yeah, it's if, not. It's if, not if even you, an adapter. It's uh, it, it's, it it's just built in adapter. Both. Yep. Uh, in a plug in a, many times when you buy a lavalier off the shelf you got to buy an adapter with it to work on the smart smartphone if you buy a mobile lavalier it's it, it'll work on the smartphone yeah there's no there's problem. actually a, a little section in the middle that has a little button on it that says smart it said, well it, it depends i've got a few of them some of them say smartphone and some of them don't but some of them just say on and off if you're using it on a camcorder you turn it on if you're using it on a smartphone you turn it off and that's how you use it with your different devices um now, just a little caveat to that, um, when you buy the, the regular generic one that'll plug into anything, and by generic I just mean it's got the, the regular plug on it, if mm-hmm. you're using a modern iPhone or a modern Samsung phone, um, you're going to need that little adapter that came with your phone that adapts for your headphone jack. Oh, so okay. So right. lightning to headphone or USB-C to headphone, you will need that little adapter for that portion of it. You can buy Movo microphones that have the Apple lightning connector on the end that you can plug directly in as well. But then you know what will make what will make it easier? Uh, Ray has a, a link uh, on the Facebook Live. We'll have it in the YouTube and the podcast to, to Movo. Uh, it, it, go to where it says smartphone and then smartphone audio. And yep. just there's a bunch of it. things in there. Yeah. So yeah. And, and if you ever have questions on it, we use almost all the stuff that's in there. I've used at different points. In fact, one thing, and I know we're starting to run over here on time, Steve, but uh, one thing I, I do want to mention is a really cool Movo microphone that um, I picked up a long time ago, kind of by accident. Um, and I don't want to say by accident, but uh, more, I was like, oh, what's this? And I bought it because it was inexpensive. And it's one of the coolest things. And I think you might have been there, Steve, when I used it. I can't remember. Um, yes, you were, because it was at uh, Dar- the Daryl Lee's event. I brought okay. my Mevo camera, and I had this, you can, you can, the way the Mevo works is the Mevo camera goes directly live out to like Facebook or, or what have you, and it connects to your smartphone. So your smartphone is your uh, monitor for the camera so you can see what's going on, and you plug your microphones into the smartphone, 
and then it's all done wirelessly through the the Mevo. Um, and I got this microphone from Movo, and it was a dual-headed lavalier microphone. And, of course, here we're getting another phone call. People don't seem to get the clue. <laughs> it Same people call them back, by the way. Same it people call them back. Um, <laughs> so you plug in the this microphone into the smartphone, and it's got two microphone heads on it. So if you're interviewing two people... Each person puts on a lavalier microphone separately, and it runs down the same wire and into the camera. So you don't, you can actually have multiple uh, oh. people talking at the same time. And that's a very cool little microphone. I think it, again, I think it was only like twenty bucks. Um, Dang! But yeah, it's it's really cool. I remember yeah. uh, our, our good our good buddy um, uh, Mike was really excited by that one because he uh, he was like, "Holy cow, you got two things on there!" And so he ordered some and gave some away, I believe, to to his people as well. So. Mike Stewart. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Pac-Man Mr. Fever. The, in, the internet audio guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that is because I've done interviews on a smartphone where I had to have a splitter, you know, to go off to the two mics, and it's kind of a pain. I mean, but now you just, wow, that is really groovy, I tell you. Yep, yep. It's, it's very nice. And to be able to just plug one in, and it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be for your phone. It could be for, you know, plug in anything, but it just has the two microphone heads, the two lavalier microphones on it. So very neat. Yeah. Very okay. neat. And I forget the name of that particular mic. In fact, I've got it sitting right here, as a matter of fact, right behind me. It's the PM20. So for those of you wow. watching on camera, there it is. You can see the two yeah. microphone heads. So PM20. And uh, very cool little mic. We've used that on the road to do interviews and stuff like that. So, well, I can see why. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. That, that would make a person's life much easier. So. Indeed. So, All right, Steve, with that, I think we're going well over our time. This is the longest show we've done in a while, over an hour now. Oh, it is. Yeah. Jeez. So we, we're trying. going along. to, But it's a lot to talk about when we talk about audio. So before we get out of here, though, I do want to mention, uh, I mentioned a contest that we've got going on right now. And for those of you watching on, on TV, oh, video, yeah. computer, we got this that we're giving away, which is a Movo Professional Smartphone Video Photography Kit. And what that comes with is it's got the, uh, this uh, stand here. This is what attaches to your tripod, and it's, it's got the hand grip on the bottom. And then you can see it mounts the microphone to the top, and it comes with the little shotgun microphone. Um, and the little shotgun microphone is very cool. It, uh, it works really well. We've used it for a lot of stuff when we're out on the road. So we're going to be able to give that away to one lucky person on June 15th. will be the day that we're doing the drawing. And the way that you join this is by heading on over to raiselinks.com slash Movo Contest. M-O-V-O Contest. And uh, all you have to do is sign up for the giveaway. That's it. Uh, once you do, you're going to have an entry into there, and you can get multiple entries by visiting our Facebook page, visiting our, uh, our subscribing to our YouTube channel, liking a video on YouTube, uh, sharing it with friends, and getting them to sign up for the contest. You do any of these things, you get more entries into the contest, and as you do that, you can actually gain rewards. So as you... So for every uh, everything you every action you take, you're going to get extra entries. When you reach a certain number of entries, you're going to get a free collection of uh, sound effects. You're going to get a free collection of stock music. You're going to get a free free collection of uh, 4K video, free collection of backgrounds, YouTube trainings. So all of those things will be uh, completely free of charge. And with that, Steve, we got to hit the music because somebody just walked in my door, and I'm the only one here. So okay. we got to go. <laughs> so here's the music. We'll see you guys next time. He's okay. Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at, even if he's a little fat. He's filled with video expertise, and has so much knowledge that you need. His YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah, Ray the Video Guy.